It is one of the great cities of the world with so many characteristics in common with other great cities. You've got to go and we give you a taste. We also visit a sophisticated eatery just off Regent Street near Piccadilly Circus by the great Gordon Ramsay. Check out some of the dishes they dished up to us there. And San Francisco is taking it to the street. Food trucks are in and hip. We'll show you some of the high-end stuff we discovered in this great food town. And you'll see a golf getaway that is affordable, fun, and loaded with choices. And hi, everyone. Cheers. Great to have you back. We've got another action-packed show. And we're taking you in one of our favorite cities in the whole world. And we are in Hong Kong. We think one of the great cities of the world. It's like New York City, San Francisco, London, a bit of Hawaii, even Nashville and Austin, all rolled into one. Once you get out of the airport, the two most popular places to stay are Hong Kong and Kowloon, especially the Chim Chow Choi district. We stayed on Hong Kong Island this time. And it's a bit expensive, um, but the, with the dollar being a bit higher now, it's actually a great place to go politically. A lot of stuff is going on over there. We'll cover more of that in the radio show. But this is a great place to get around. It's really easy to get around. Absolutely. The Airport Express is the best way to go from the airport to Kowloon or Hong Kong Island, and it's cheap, easy, convenient, and fast. And right here, we're going to show you Canton Road, not to be mixed up with Canton, Ohio, which many of us mix up with their syllables. Uh, I mean syllables. <laughs> That's right. Canton Road is high-end shopping. That's where you will find brands like Gucci, Hermes, and Versace. And you can also buy a tailored suit for really cheap. Custom made, perfectly fitted, delivered in a day or two for very, very cheap. Nathan Road is where you want to go for all the tailors. And this is why Hong Kong is like Nashville or Austin. Great music at night. Yeah, and this guy is a local legend. He is off the chain. And of course, Hong Kong has great food, and we took you to another Gordon Ramsay place called London House. And like all places in Hong Kong, they have great entertainment there, too. Okay, let's get into the food. There was some really good stuff here. This is the sausage roll, and this was a Gordon Recommends dish. And the sauce they served on the side was so good, it was like Tabasco, ketchup, and mayonnaise mixed together. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Greens were nice, too. It's a, that was a great combo. All right, what the next one is coming up is going to be a crab pot. I love this, too. I should tell everybody I loved everything that we had there. Oh, absolutely. And this, you have a big bunch of butter on the top of it that you then have to mix in with it before you spread it on this yummy bread. And then, of course, we always have to do fish and chips. And to me, out of all the fish and chips we've done, I, I think this might be the, the better one, even better than London. Yeah, oh, this was the best. By far, so good, moist inside, the best batter in the world, just crispy and delicious on the outside, super hot. And what was the sauce there? Oh, that it. was mushy peas, actually, so mushy green peas right there. And this is the chicken tikka marsala, and that's basmati rice on the side there. That sauce is amazing. It's spicy and flavorful and great with the rice. But not too spicy. And here was the, uh, what I call the standard hamburger. I thought this was fabulous. Oh, and I call it the best burger in the world. Oh. It's so good, moist, juicy, cooked perfectly as only the Gordon Ramsay way can do. And of course, being a good Irish boy, he made me get shepherd's pie, and the shepherd's pie was really good. In fact, you can see how steamy it is. Mm -hmm. Another Gordon Ramsay trait, steamy, hot, delicious, and that's like yummy, yummy lamb mixed with vegetables and potatoes there. And of course, we had to go to McDonald's. We don't normally show you fast food, but this is called McDonald's Next. This is not your daddy's McDee's. All you do is you order on a screen and you have your burger your way, and they're trying to make it fresh and gourmet. The place was packed. So this is obviously the new way for fast food in the 21st century. It's, it's actually kind of cool if you get a chance to go see it. It's worthwhile seeing this, even though we don't do fast food. But this is definitely the wave of the future. This is 21st century. Absolutely. And this is a special test kitchen that they did in Hong Kong. So look for one in your neighborhood, perhaps, very soon. Now, you might also want to just get out of Hong Kong. We actually took a boat to one of the nearby islands. Yes, and we took a boat by accident. We meant to go to Kowloon, and we were uh, on our way to Lama. 
And Alama, you don't have uh, any cars there, so you have to take bikes. There was fresh food, a great spot just to get away. A lot of people do the same thing here. This is the Marriott where we stay. This is the Mar- JW Marriott in Hong Kong. This is a great place to stay, too. Absolutely. And it's on the Hong Kong Island side, very easy to get around, gorgeous atmosphere, great executive lounge that you'll see up here in just a minute, good restaurants, just great food, fabulous, fabulous staff. We can't say enough about them. They were amazing. And if, you, uh, if you're in a place like Hong Kong where you're rushing around doing a lot, it's always great to have a base where you can sit and just relax and enjoy the day that you've had here. And we're going to show you in a second, uh, Susan was saying the... Um, uh, the executive lounge, and you get to look over a lot of the harbor. Great spot. A lot of food, a lot of good wine, a lot of booze up there. You can always get a martini. Yeah, and we actually saw the fireworks to celebrate Chinese New Year on Victoria Harbor from there. It was the best view of the night. Well, Hong Kong was a lot of fun, and it's it's actually a great time to go because the U.S. dollar is so strong, so you're going to get some great deals there. A lot of construction going on, a lot of infrastructure being built, so you'll see that. You can see that they're modernizing a lot of different things there, but uh, great place to go. Oh, absolutely. No matter what, Hong Kong is so worth it. Next up, uh, Gordon Ramsay delivers for us in London. And welcome back. Recently, we were in London, and uh, London is bigger and better than ever. Oh, absolutely. And many thanks in part to celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay. We visited one of his best spots there, right off of glitzy Regent Street. From the hustle and bustle of the National Galleries, just a shout away is another Gordon Ramsay restaurant. Gordon Ramsay, celebrity chef, chef extraordinaire, Hedden Street Kitchen. What an amazing place. Actually, this was a lot of fun. This was a good restaurant. We really enjoyed it here in London, and the staff was great. And staff the- was amazing. I mean, brilliant concepts in food, wine, design. Um, we just loved it. Okay, here's our first hors d'oeuvre here. This was a... Uh, Flatbread with butternut squash, mushrooms, caper berries, and telegio. Telegio was nice and creamy. Beautiful. Looked as good as it, uh, as, as, good as it was. And also, and the scallops here. Oh, my God, what he did with the scallops. Oh, best scallops. Amazing. Um, they were baked with carrot puree and treacle cured bacon. Mm, yeah, and then we had the carpaccio, beef carpaccio. This was, this was really good. And that came with endive and an onion salad. And this, this coming up, this, is, this was kind of something we'd never yeah. expected, never heard of before. This was really cool, but you got to like gooey eggs. Oh my god. If you love eggs, this will be your favorite thing. It's called crispy egg soldiers with wild mushrooms. And then you dip some brioche in there. Ugh, it's like buttery, eggy, just heavenly goodness. And that's what you want. It's so good. I could eat this all day long, morning, noon, and night. Yeah, actually, this would have been a great breakfast. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this goes with everything. Coffee, champagne, wine, whatever you want. It's so delicious. It's just a beautiful Beautiful, beautiful dish. And so gooey. If, if, you don't, if you don't like running eggs, you're not going to like this. But uh, I, actually, it was superb. We really enjoyed it. Okay, let's get into some of the entrees because we had a couple of people with us. Uh, this first one, this was a real good one. Mm-hmm. They, they had the baked spinach ricotta and artichoke cannelloni. And as you can see, it's going to be steaming hot. And that's a Gordon Ramsay trait. They have amazing expediters that deliver the food direct from the kitchen as soon as it's ready. Or else they get yelled at. This was the, like their macaroni and cheese. This was super. And they have slow braised beef in there. Now we're moving on to the HSK fish and chips with mushy peas. This is a traditional, amazing Gordon Ramsay dish. I think he has a signature dish at every restaurant with this fish and chips. Okay, and, and back to the gooey part. This is this is fish here. This is a fish that you got. Yeah, can you tell we like eggs? Yeah, <laughs> this it was, was really a cool. cod fillet with a tartar mashed potato, and then on top was this beautiful, perfectly, perfectly cooked poached egg. It just dripped down. It was so delicious. And here was the white wine that we had. Uh, right, it was a Chablis, and it was uh, Fevre, Fevre. And that's uh, Chablis is a French Chardonnay, and so it's called Chablis because that is the city that is it is raised in or born in, and it's in Burgundy, and it's a cool climate for Chablis, so it has a completely different Chardonnay flavor. Yeah, and it wasn't really like the like the California ones. This is more of a 
more of a French kind than anything else. But uh, anyway, this is a great spot. He's done a great job here at this place. Yeah. As for Daniela, he was our waiter. He was amazing, as was all the staff. And it's not that far away. And not only that, uh, you won't get yelled at. Yeah, the food was great there. And, you know, we always joke about Gordon Ramsay yelling and screaming because of his show on Hell's Kitchen. And really, you say that that's actually important to know. Oh, absolutely. Well, because it's not really anger or anything like that. It's just that he is so attention to detail oriented. You know, he really cares and he wants everyone to care about the food that works for him as well. I mean, the food there was served up hot, delicious. The service was impeccable. They are also open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, as well as brunch. And also in another show, we go to another Gordon Ramsay place and we found the greatest steak in the world. So you'll have to stay tuned for that in, uh, in some upcoming shows. Oh my God, it's decadent and to die for. Next up, John Goes Trekking. Okay, so what do you think of when you think of San Francisco? I mean, it's romantic, it's a city by the bay, sophisticated restaurants. Well, and, and for me as a sports fan, I, I think of the fact that the Giants have won three World Series already uh, since the turn of the century. Um, they have the Warriors in the in the NBA, so they got that going. But you got uh, high tech entrepreneurs. You got go back to history, Hate Ashbury, and uh, in the hippie generation. Uh, but there's some other cool things that are happening there today that are new and unique. Oh, yeah, absolutely. As you found out when you went trucking with the food truck movement on the streets of San Francisco. This is not your daddy's roach coach. Gourmet food trucks have invaded all major U.S. cities. It's like Amazon on wheels. The food almost comes to you. It's delicious. I specifically came to this Yeah, we come here every single time there. <laughs> They're talking about Trey's truck and its gourmet Mexican food. One of two gourmet trucks I indulged in. James Greer brought me my four course meals on wheels. This is our slow roasted pork and it comes with pineapple, um, tomatillo salsa, which is like an avocado salsa, onions and cilantro. That is really good. That is really good. And a hot dog, but not your ordinary wiener. So it's a twist on a hot dog with Kobe beef. Bacon and then the chipotle mayo, which is like the best stuff ever. That mayo is really good. Everything. But wait, there was more. A side dish of elote. It's shaved corn off the cob. Huh? We put crema, which is like a Mexican sour cream. Uh, we put a cojita cheese, which is a salty cheese. So we don't add like any kind of extra salt to it. And then we put um, pepper in. No, that's really that's cool. My favorite thing. I mean, that. I, I was I was thinking it would be like a summer. I guess because of the corn. You could eat this all year round now. Mm -hmm. And then you got to wash it down with a Mexican Coke. How's that a Mexican Coke? Um, Mexican Coke is we use real sugar instead of corn syrup. Really? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. A lot better. And just by making a slight turn, I went from Mexico to Japan. Emily Young from Mana Japanese Comfort Food provided my mobile sushi. This one is linky salmon with the uh, tempura shroom roll. Okay. Yeah. So salmon is pineapple. Mm-hmm. Okay. And What's it? Like Topico th is like a flying fish egg. We'll do without the wasabi. This is the one the tofu. Thank you so much. Notice the drool. Oh, look at that. Poki ahi, we wrap it up like a sushi burrito style. Mm. Very fresh. Oh, that's fabulous. And this is um one of our fresh boom lychee iced tea. Ah. Yeah, with a mint leaf in it, so as a really refreshing one too. Oh. It goes together really well together with the sushi, so. The recipe for success varies. For instance, Trey's truck is attached to a bricks and mortar restaurant. 
but the restaurant and truck cross-promote each other. But Mana finds advantages as a road tour restaurant. Yes, definitely would be cheaper to start up and um, easier. Yeah, because the menu is like smaller menu, so just less to prop and just easier and focus on one or two things that you do the, you know, the best. And gourmet food trucks usually have lower prices. They're not fast food prices, but they beat most restaurants. And the anger among traditional restaurant owners toward food trucks has died down. Local governments have enacted regulations keeping food trucks from stepping onto restaurants' street turf. But that has created new streams of income for some other businesses. Bob Wilms of New Black, a fashion incubator, rents space to the gourmet trucks and takes a cut of their sales. Have you seen it help your business at all? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Mission Dispatch has been a success. We serve around 200 people a day, Monday through Friday for lunch from 11 till 2 p.m. And there's two different food trucks here a day. So we schedule around 20 food trucks in the calendar month. And it's just, it's fun. You know, it's really cool. We meet a lot of new people. There's a lot of creatives that meet for the first time in the neighborhood. For the truck employees, it's freedom. James loves being on the road. Here we come every two weeks on Mondays and then like Vallejo and Front down in the financial district we go like every other Wednesday and then sometimes you know we have people like hey you know come to this spot you know we're getting really good business and we also do like tailgatings for um, the ball games um, we do private events like America's Cup um, we've done farmers markets. Emily actually gets to bring her daughter Noel to work. Well, she definitely attracts some customers, yeah. So I guess that is a good thing. But uh, as you see, the truck is so limited. We have all this equipment inside, so sometimes it could be kind of tough to have a you know a kid in there. Not so tough that Noel can't help finalize a transaction or two. The only drawback they could cite was the weather. The first year we didn't expect, you know, to be outside in a, in a, in a cold rainy day would be that bad. Yeah, even though we have, you know, everything like cover up, but I, I feel like definitely you're out there by yourself. So that is kind of like a, one thing that I feel like that, that definitely affects a business. And I feel, oh, I've never, you know, feel anything like that before in a restaurant. If weather is the only drawback, then it's safe to say Gourmet food trucks are no fad. Now, excuse me, as I get back to eating. Yeah, I know, I was having a little too much fun, but I, I gotta tell you, the food was fabulous. Oh, absolutely. And we've got more great food coming up for you on a golf getaway. That's up next. Welcome back. So where do you go to get great food on a golf course? Well, there's a lot of great places. I found one in Pauly's Island, which is just south of Myrtle Beach. So it's a great place to go play golf. It's a mecca of golf. But if you're a golfer with a good palate, another good place to go too. Here's a weekend golf getaway for couples or just the guys or just the gals. We're on Pauly's Island, just south of Myrtle Beach, a year-round golf escape. We played Blackmore, Gary Player's only design in the region. It's tricky but fun. Easy on the ladies too as far as distances. We also played Wilbrook, an old style plantation course with some incredible views, tough holes, and plenty of history dating back to the 19th century. I will review both these great layouts and their intricacies in future videos. We stayed in more modern accommodations at Litchfield Beach and Golf Resort, but as modern as it is, it has a touch of the Old South. It's about two hours north of Charleston, and it has a feel of Charleston with those live old oak trees that you can only get down south, plus plenty of the best beaches in the world, along with Carolina waterways and marshes. It is perfect to come year-round, even as an escape from the northern winters, and there are plenty of different condos to choose from with great views and comfortable digs after a round of golf. Now, besides being a golf nut, I'm a food and drink snob. Here, you can cook for yourself in a condo set up for your best culinary creations. And there are grocery stores nearby, so whatever you need to make that master's dinner work, all the fixings are there, as we found out with this tender and buttery lobster we made ourselves. 
or you can stay on property and let Webster's do the cooking. It is down-home food with a gourmet flair. This ribeye was done to perfection, and the fish and chips was something even a Brit holding the claret jug would love. But what if you want to go off property? Well, like the plentiful number of golf courses, Pauly's Island has plenty of cool watering spots. We found this one, Bourbon and Burns. It's a whiskey and cigar bar, so you can go after a round of golf or taking a nightcap after a good meal with some of the best bourbons, whiskeys, and cigars. And the best thing, Uber drivers are in the area, so no need to ruin a good trip by going out of bounds with the law. About the only sand bunker you need to hit is this one. I want to give special thanks to our partner Worldwide Golf Marketing for setting up this great weekend. All you have to do is call Litchfield Beach and Golf at this number. They can set up the entire trip for you, golf included. If you go, let me know what you think. Keep swinging easy, folks. We'll catch you on the next round. Everything was great. It was really great food and it's great golf down there. We're going to do more uh, from Myrtle Beach because it is a golf mecca, so we'll be showing a lot more uh, golf courses and some restaurants down there as well. We're actually going to go further south down to Charleston and give you a little bit of that antebellum charm. Ooh, sounds like fun. Yes. And we have so many more great places to take you, so join us next time. Can't wait to see you. In the meantime, cheers. Cheers.